How's everyone doing today? You know, Pastor Clint was talking about uh, Christmas not being over yet, and it's not. I'm still going to be celebrating Jesus, but today, when I get home, I'm getting those Christmas decorations down, <laughs> off my house, out my yard, and I'm cutting my grass. I'm weeding, I'm edging. It's got that winter scrub. You know how it, like, it don't need to be cut, but it just got a few weeds popping up here and there? I don't like all that. <laughs> so, for Christmas this year, we had an awesome time. We gathered together at my grandpa's house, and we had a great time. You know, some memories are made for Christmas. It's not about everything you get, right? It's not about the materialistic things. Sometimes it's just about the memories you make with family. So this year, my grandpa, he made everyone some rubber band guns. And I mean everyone, not just the kids. So you've never seen fun and happiness until you've seen a bunch of grown men running around, stinging each other with rubber bands from across the house. It went on for about 45 minutes to the point where Jax was coming in like every 15 seconds crying because he got stung. And like any good mama, she put a hat on his head. She took some cardboard boxes from the presents. She wrapped them around him. And he was walking there down there like a robot so he wouldn't get stung. You know, so we had some awesome times. I hope that you guys had a great Christmas as well. You know, this morning, we're going to talk about sacred, right? And the carols of the season. So the carol that I want to talk about this morning is actually the 12 Yaks of Cajun Christmas. Okay? So it starts like this. On the first day of Christmas, my mama gave to me a crawfish she caught an Arabie. Okay, so the 12 Yaks of Christmas. And Pastor Clint said we had to draw the theology out of these carols. And what I drew from this Christmas carol is that God loves crawfish. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Yeah. <laughs> no, on a serious note, on a serious note, this morning I want to talk about joy to the world, right? The Lord has come. Yeah. You see, joy has been on my mind a lot lately because in 2020 and then all the way through 2021 with COVID and, and the storm, there's been a lot of things besides joy, right? There's been a lot of circumstances that can bring us down. There's been a lot of heartache. There's been a lot of despair. There's been a lot of things that just aren't joyful, right? So I want to sing today the first verse, and I need you guys to help me, okay? Most of you know it. If you don't, just do this. Huh? And you'll, you'll win right in. So let's sing it. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room in heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. Yeah, I just crushed that. Yeah. That is pretty good, right? Now. <laughs> no, you see, I can't even get past that first verse today. Yeah. Right? That first verse yeah. is literally <laughs> all I'm gonna talk about today. Because yeah. when Jesus entered this world. When Jesus was born in that manger, he brought with him joy. Yeah. He brought with him a joy unspeakable, a joy inexpressible, a joy that carries more weight than any circumstance that we can face here on earth, a joy that cannot be taken away. You see, the world didn't give us the joy. Yeah. So the world can't take our joy away. Hey, notice that this song, right? It doesn't say happiness to the world. It says joy to the world. Oftentimes, I think we can make the mistake of comparing happiness and joy, right? There's a bunch of things in this world that can make us happy, right? A promotion at work can make us happy. A new car in the driveway can make us happy. A bunch of money can make us happy. A new relationship can make us happy. You know what? Even sin itself can make us happy for a moment. But I want to tell you this morning that these things, this happiness, is just a fleeting feeling. It's something that, that's here today and gone tomorrow. Joy, on the other hand, joy from the Lord is a living hope. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Hey, raise your hand if you've heard that before. The joy of the Lord is our strength. It comes out of the book of Nehemiah. It's Nehemiah 8.10 when Ezra says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. He was speaking to the remnant of Israel 
who has returned to Judah to rebuild its temple. It was a time of restoration. When I read that, when I was looking that up, when I was thinking of and contemplating the joy of the Lord and our strength, in a time of restoration, boy, that hit home. If you drove down by Yagos Road recently, you can see that we're in a time of restoration with our church. You can drive down people's streets, and you can see campers and driveways, and you can see that we're in a time of restoration. And that hit me so hard, is that now more than ever, in this time of restoration, in the here and the now, we don't need a fleeting feeling, right? We don't need happiness that's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. We need the joy of the Lord. We need a firm foundation, right? The Bible says that though pain may come in the night, joy comes in the morning, right? Joy comes in the morning. So this morning, where do you find yourself? Do you find yourself where maybe you need a little bit of joy? Do you find yourself in a circumstance of despair or a place of anxiousness, a place of worry, a place where you need a firm foundation to stand on? You know, I say all these things and I say we get the joy from the Lord and it's so true. You know what that doesn't mean? It doesn't mean that we're not going to have hard times. Does that mean that we're going to have moments of grief? Yes. Are we going to have times of sadness? Yes. Are we going to have feelings of despair at times? Yes. See, these feelings are sure to come. But our hope is in the anchor and the joy of the Lord. That tonight when you lay your head on that pillow, tomorrow it doesn't have to be the same. That today, when you make your next move, it doesn't have to be the same. That feeling of despair can be gone in an instant. If we rely on the joy of the Lord. You see, the joy of the Lord doesn't come in a moment. The joy of the Lord comes moment by moment. So when we choose the Lord, we don't choose him one time. We choose the Lord over and over and over again. And when you pick up on that concept, when you implement that into your life, you can realize just how good he is. That it's not, hey, I'm here on a Sunday. God, I need you. Or I'm in a time of despair. God, I need you. No, it's moment by moment. It's when you're at work. I need you. I'm in my car. I need you. I'm driving. I need you. I'm there. I need you. Moment by moment, yes. we pick up our cross and we choose the Lord. And that's where our joy comes from. <laughs> hey, John 16, says this. I have told you these things. So that in me, you may have perfect peace. In the world, you have tribulation and distress and suffering. Let me repeat that. In the world, you have tribulation, distress, and suffering. But be courageous. I love how the Amplified Version expands. It says, be courageous. It says, be confident. Be undaunted. Be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory is abiding. You see, the joy of the Lord is knowing that we win. The joy of the Lord is knowing that he comes and has overcome the world. Right? This whole month, we've been away in the manger. A little time of Bethlehem. All about the coming of Christ. And the joy of him being here. Hey, he's coming again. You know, oftentimes when I was a kid and I was growing up, that used to be a fearful thing for me. I used to think, man, oh, the, the Lord's coming. He's coming again. We don't know the time or the hour. I remember being six years old and we were staying with my grandma. We were in between moving to another house. And I remember being in my bed at night and I would cry. Mama, can you come lay with me? I'm scared the Lord's going to come tonight. <laughs> Uh, but I'm going to miss y'all, mama, right? When I was six years old, I didn't know what was going on. But now today, right, I can know that that's not fearful. That's our living hope. That when the Lord comes again, that he's come, that he died, that he was resurrected, he went back to heaven, and he's coming again. That's literally a hope that we can live on. A joy that we can anchor to, to know that this isn't, this isn't it. This isn't our final resting place. Right. This isn't our home. This is just a passerby. Right? If I had a string and I stretched it from here to the end of the wall back there, just a little piece of nylon string, and I put one, 
flip of a marker on it, just red, right? That would represent our time here on earth. But eternity spent with the Father, right? And the joy of knowing that we have that, the joy of knowing that this isn't it, is an anchor in our life. You know, while studying for this message, I'll do all kinds of things when I'm studying for a message. First of all, you read the Word, right? If that's not the basis of any message of the Word of God, then probably shouldn't preach it. <laughs> but then I'll start reading articles, and I'll start reading, you know, picking up things from different sources. And I ran across the article, and it was a guy asking people of different religions what they thought about joy, or what joy meant to them. A Hindu man defined joy as something we can sense through our five senses, right? Sight, a beautiful flower, hearing, music, taste, like a dessert or a smell, a special perfume, and a feeling. A young agnostic said this. He said, if you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. If you want happiness for a lifetime, help someone else. Doesn't sound bad, does it? A scholar pointed out, in the fifth century, a Roman senator and philosopher could claim that God is happiness itself. But by the middle of the 19th century, the formula would reverse to read, happiness is God. Yeah. Earthly happiness emerged as the idol of idols, yeah. right? The central meaning in modern life, the source of human aspiration, the purpose of existence, materialism relocated God to the shopping, shopping mall. And then lastly, he asked the Christian, and the Christian replied, I find joy in Jesus. The simplicity of the gospel is what makes it so appealing, guys. Is that we don't have to do all these different things. We don't have to measure up to all these different things. That the joy is in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. This whole year, throughout youth, I've basically been preaching the message, the same message every week, just in a different way. Because <laughs> I can't get it out of my head. It's that if we seek the Lord, yeah. everything else is secondary. The joy you're looking for, seek the Lord. The anxiety you're looking to get rid of, seek the Lord. The worry you want to push to the side, seek the Lord. Because if we seek him first, all that other stuff lines up. And when we seek him, we can get that joy. Right? Sometimes we tend to complicate things. Set your eyes on Jesus. Fix your focus. <coughs> On Jesus because when we surrender when we commit when we develop a relationship with the Lord the joy comes right alongside that you see Philippians 4 says this Paul writes therefore my fellow believers whom I love and long for my delight some translations use the word joy here and my crown my wreath of victory in this way stand firm in the Lord my beloved my wreath of victory we win who loves the victory all right, don't watch the saints this season. <laughs> Especially today. I think they're starting a rookie quarterback, so it might be a rough game. But look, we are victorious. We have to grasp that, guys. We have to come up with that concept to know that this isn't it. That in the end, we win. That there might be despair. There might be heartache. I feel it too. Everyone in this room has felt despair, heartache over 2020 and 2021. Trust me. At some point in time. But it doesn't end there. We win. Philippians goes on to say this. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. It doesn't say rejoice in the Lord sometimes. It doesn't say rejoice in the Lord when you want to. It doesn't say rejoice in the Lord when you feel like it. It says rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say. You know what's important? Because he's saying, repeating himself in the same sentence. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all people. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition, with thanks thanksgiving, continue to make your request known to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, stands guard over your hearts and in your minds and in Christ Jesus. Rejoice. 
right? To feel or to show delight, to brighten up, to leap, to spin around. All right, if you've driven down the roads of Bayou Gawash lately, 83% of you have caught a nail in your tire. I'll look that statistic up on Google. You know what? It sounds so silly. It sounds so silly, but it works. The next time you get a nail in your tire, the next time something goes round, what if you just like, woo! Thank you, Lord! Praise you, Jesus! You're laughing. Try it. You're laughing. Next time something goes wrong, rejoice anyways. You know what? Because we're not rejoicing because the nail is in our tire. We're rejoicing because you have access to the true source of joy itself. Amen. It sounds so silly, but it works. Well, I got to clean this house. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> well, I got to cut this grass. Thank you, Lord. Because we have access to the source of joy. Gratitude and praise is the answer. Gratitude and praise will get you to a place where you can be filled with the joy of the Lord. See, the joy of the Lord is the gladness of heart that comes from knowing God. Listen, listen. Comes from knowing God. This is the important part. Abiding in Christ. We can know God. We can know about God. Or you can know God. You can know about God or you can know God. And then at that point, you can abide in Christ. Yeah. You see, that's a choice. It's a choice to abide in Christ. It's a choice to say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to live for you. Or, Lord, I'm going to live for myself. You know, when I think about joy and I think about this whole scenario, I think about dynamite. You guys ever watch, like, The Roadrunner? Cartoon Network? The dynamite that's always exploding? Right? You have three parts of dynamite. You have the gunpowder, which is encased, right? You have the ignition source, and then you have the fuse, okay? So the gunpowder is going to be representing us in our faith. The ignition source is Jesus, and the fuse is our choosing to rejoice. Having the joy of the Lord is a fuse to our faith, yeah. right? Joy will cause your faith to become explosive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, want, you want explosive faith? Praise God in a time of despair. Yeah. You want explosive play, faith? Praise God when the circumstances don't line up. Yeah. You want explosive faith? <clears throat> Praise God when you get a nail in your tire. Yeah. Yeah. You see, this right here, <clears throat> right, represents God. Here you go, Pastor. It's all right. And I am the dynamite, faith, right? But that ignition source can't get to me. Why can't it get to me? Because there's no fuse. There's no fuse. Pastor, can I light it up? See, he can have that flame lit all he wants. But I am not connected to the source. My faith isn't connected to the ignition source. But if I had a fuse, here you go, just hold it, you don't have to light it yet. <laughs> See, I actually, I, I soaked this robe in kerosene. <laughs> no, but this is it, guys. Look now. You see, my faith is not connected to the source. If Pastor Clint were to light this fuse, then it could reach me. We have to be connected to the source. Your joy is the fuse. Are you going to worship in a time of despair? Are you going to worship... In a circumstance when things aren't exactly going the way you think they should. When we are connected to the source, there can be an explosion of our faith that not only affects us, but it affects those around us. Because what happens when things explode? It affects everything around you, right? When you want an explosion of faith, you want to glorify God, let that explosion happen and see who it affects. Right, because the circumstances that upside down, that explosion might flip it right side up. Yeah. That despair might turn into joy. That sadness might turn into happiness. That grief, that grief may be something that was there at night, but it's going on. Yeah. See, the joy of the Lord is a fuse. You want explosive faith? Worship when you don't want to worship. You've prayed when you don't feel like 
giving praise. Yeah. See, it's one thing to have joy when everything's going great, right? But it's an explosion moment when you access the joy of the Lord when you're at the lowest of lows. Yes. What does all this do, right? It glorifies God. It glorifies God. As a Christ follower, anything we do, everything we do is to give God glory. Yeah. See, this whole time we've been talking about joy, right? I haven't even gotten off the title yet, guys. I hope y'all ain't hungry. <laughs> we've been talking about joy and the joy that the Lord can bring. But the song goes on, joy to the world. Let earth receive her king. You see, Pastor Clinton's first message he preached away in the manger, right? And he talked about how people like the baby Jesus in the manger. But they think twice about the Jesus that was nailed to the cross. You see, the baby Jesus in the manger is cute and cuddly, and it's just a lot of good things. But the, the Christ that was nailed to the cross might just ask something for us in return. Yeah. He might just ask for a life of worship, yeah. right? He might just ask that we give him our everything. He might just ask that we lay down our life. You see, when the song says, let earth receive her king, it's not just referring to a baby in a manger. It's referring to the king of kings. Yeah. The Jesus that was born, that lived, that died, and rose again to save us, but in return expects a life that worships him. Yeah. Not expects a life that worships him when we feel like it. Let earth receive her king. You see, the thing is that people want the benefits of the kingdom without submission to the king. Yeah. 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 We want everything good that the word has to offer, but we don't just want to submit to the king himself. Yeah. It don't work like that. We need to be submissive to the king if we want the benefits of the kingdom. Without the submission to the king, you don't get the benefits of the kingdom. And there can't be two kings in our lives. See, we can't be king of our own lives and then also allow to be Jesus to be king too at times. Yeah. All right, Lord, I got this one. <laughs> this one, not too complicated. I got this one, God. See, this one over here, I'm going to let you take care of that one. This year, I got that. That's my job. But Lord, got my family. They cuckoo. You take care of those people, Lord. <laughs> no, the thing is, is that Jesus is king and he's king all the time. When we're king of our own lives, we can pursue happiness, and sometimes we'll find it. Like, sometimes we will find happiness if we pursue it ourselves. But when Jesus is king over our lives, he supplies joy. It's not something we have to go searching for. It's given. In Luke one thirty two, the angel Gabriel announces Jesus' kingship to the Virgin Mary, saying, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. There will be no end. More than you can know. The question is, this morning, that I want to present, is Jesus king over your life? Is he king all the time? Or is he king sometimes? Because there's joy when he came to this earth. And there's joy knowing that he'll come again. And that we have an anchor to know that today isn't the ending. That we'll spend eternity in heaven. But we have to make God the king of our lives. Moment by moment. Serving God isn't a one-time deal, guys. Serving the Lord is waking up every day, knowing that there's a choice to be made, that I'm going to choose to serve God, that I'm going to choose to put down my will and pick up his purpose for my life. See, there's three things that we can realize to get the joy of the Lord. It's one is to know that we have to submit to his kingship to be a part of his kingdom. There's only one thing, one king is him. He's sovereign, and we choose to give him ultimate control of our lives. In other words, we aren't king of our lives. He is. And once we do that, we realize that we're citizens of heaven. That we are a part of a kingdom here and now and forevermore. And that is our living hope. 
That is our anchor of joy, knowing that there's more than just here and now. Peter 1, verses 3 through 8 says this. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. An end to an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, you may have suffered grief of all kinds of trials. These come so that proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor with Jesus Christ is revealed. Verse 8. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with his inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Verse 6, going back, he says, In all of this, greatly rejoice. Even though the circumstances don't line up, you greatly rejoice. Even though your house got destroyed, greatly rejoice. Even though the church was demolished, greatly rejoice. Even though you find yourself in a season of grief, greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while you may have suffered grief and all kinds of trials, but joy is coming. It's coming. Well, that's a hope you can hold on to, to know that it's coming. It might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but it is coming. In verse 8, through you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him, and you are filled with an inexpressible, glorious joy. What is inexpressible? Too strong to be described or conveyed in words. It's that thank you, excuse me, explosion moment yeah. that you can't describe. You can't describe it to anybody else. This is the thing. When that explosion happens, people question it. I want that. Yeah. How, how are they joyful? No, nothing's going right in their life. How are they joyful? Everything's messed up. How are they joyful? That explosion moment. That someone says, you know what? I want access to that joy that they have. The joy of the Lord may be inexpressible. But it's there for you. It's there for me. It's there for the believer in Christ. There for the, the person who wants to say, you know what? I'm submitting to the king. As we abide in Christ, right, the true value we have, the branches are full of his strength, and the fruit that we produce, including his joy, is his doing. Knowing that it has nothing to do with the pursuit of our own happiness, but everything to do with him. And lastly, the third thing is, remember the world is not our home. You see, when I think about an eternity with Jesus, I'll get teared up. When I think about this life as a vapor, when I think about the opportunity we have here on earth to express joy in hard times, to give God that glory, you know what? Don't miss an opportunity. Don't miss an opportunity to express joy. Don't miss an opportunity to let someone see you joyful in a moment that might be the reason that they're led to Christ. Because this life is here today going tomorrow. We know it too often. And we see it too much. Don't miss an opportunity. I want to repeat John 16, 33. It says this. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous. Be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished, my victory abides. He has overcome the world. So this morning, you guys can stand to your feet.
Maybe you can find yourself feeling uh, hopeless. Or maybe you find yourself lacking joy this season. See, the king of joy and the king of hope is just a whisper away. He's just a thought away. When I tell you the gospel is easy, it's easy. It's surrendering to God. Is walking that out difficult? Yes. But the act of surrendering to God is all it takes. Call him. Let him know. Lord Jesus, I need you now. I need that joy that's an anchor. Rejoice in our living hope and allow him to pour out his joy in the midst of your circumstance. You guys can go ahead and bow your hands. You know, maybe there's one or maybe there's plenty in here this morning that just says, you know what, I've been in that time. I've been in the lows of lows. Maybe you've been in the lows and lows for a while now. And you're like, I need the joy of the Lord. I've had it before, but I've just I've lost touch with that. If that's you, no one looking around, just go ahead and slip up a hand for a moment. I see your hands. Look how we pray for those people today, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we pray right now, Lord God, that you supply them with the joy, Lord God. Lord God, that you give them the urgency to submit to your kingship, Lord God. Lord God, that you give them the hope of knowing that this isn't it, Lord God. That though they may be down and out now, Lord God, that the joy can come in the morning, Lord God. Lord God, that we realize that we choose you moment by moment. We choose you moment by by moments. Or maybe you're in this room this morning and you've never submitted to the king. Maybe it's been a while or you just came to church this morning and, and you feel a tug in your heart and you say, Lord, I want to submit to your kingship. Lord, I want to give my life to you. Lord, I want to re-give my life to you. If that's you this morning, you go ahead and slip up a hand. Yes, Lord, we thank you. If you raise your hand, you can just say it in your own words, and I'll pray for you, but just exclaim your love for Jesus. Exclaim your submission to him. Repent of your sins to him. Lord God, we pray right now, Lord God, that the few that raise their hand, Lord Jesus, Lord God, that they come to submission to your kingship, Lord God. That you forgive them of their sins, Lord God. Lord God, that they realize that you are the one true source, Lord God, and that submission to you, all else things, and all other things come, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this time together, Lord God, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we thank you right now for the few that raised their hand, Lord God, and want to submit to your kingship, Lord God. We pray that the joy of the Lord be upon every person in this room today, Lord God. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, my hope today is that as we conclude this Christmas season and we start the new year, is that we can realize that we have a lot of joyful things to be looking forward to. If you've seen the building lately, you saw we got a shingles on the roof. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. So I can't wait for that moment that we're back together in there. So there's so many things to look forward to in 2022. Hey, we love you guys. You guys have a great day.